Well, good afternoon. Ah, Brother Mark. Going to deal with a real hard topic again. Uh, maybe maybe viewer discretion is might be advised in this one. It's going to be a heavy, heavy hitter, as Amy wants to say. It's going to be a th third rail. I mean, if it's too much, and you you got to take a break from it, come back. That's perfectly fine. Um, if you can only take bits and pieces and want to kind of break it down, you know that's you know, that's fine. And if it's just too much, that's you know, that that's a, that's okay too. And you're. However, for those who would really take the the time to to listen to today's program, I, I th and then and really hang tough, I think we're all going to kind of get an education. So that said, uh, my name is uh, I'm Brother Mark, and this is the, welcome to the YouTube channel, Brother Mark Turner Syndrome: Butterflies in Life. Uh, over the, the past couple of years, the Turner Syndrome community has been rocked by, by bullying, and it's been rocked by verbal attacks, death threats. And what I, what I started to learn, though, is I started doing some research, this is what's known as narcissistic abuse. So I'm, I'm going to talk about a specific type of narcissistic abuse called victimized narcissistic abuse in which the abuser is actually playing the role of the victim. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and give uh, give an actual case study. Uh, Story true will change names to uh, to to protect the to protect the innocent. And so let me get a couple things uh, out of the out of the way first. Uh, uh, I have talked to people in the Turner Syndrome community and they wonder what's this drama about. And quite frankly, I didn't know until I started realizing what was going on. I started doing some, done some real research, and that's been a good, has been has been really good and, and and really helpful. So, it's also been beneficial because a lot of people have asked, "What is Turner syndrome?" And it's been nice. And I said, I've been able to give you know, just a basic rundown, basic rundown, and then given given research. And resources and say, so, hey, go you know check out these organizations and you know, go ahead and do some internet research, and I think you might find in that way you can you can you know, really learn really learn something about it. Um, I want to go over just a, just a you know a cup you know just a a legal caveat. First off, a lot of people come to me, understandably so, and I respect this. I said, Mark. You, Please don't use real names because we're getting we're getting attacked. And I said, okay, that's that's fine. And I'm a big believer in emotional safety. So, so, and we've had situations where I've actually used you know, re, used real names, and it's and you know, out of respect, I think that's a very wise request, and I'm happy to do that. So today the situations are real, but but the. Uh, but we're going to do the proverbial change the names and the uh, names and names and the places. But I, what I really want to do, though, is demonstrate how the how the abuse plays out, and then also, it's not only it's not a brother Mark thing, but it's actually it really kind of goes back to the to the. Uh, to the to the but to the butterfly who who engaged in the behavior, and unfortunately has really affected a lot of us. And a lot of us have, uh, have said, you know, we're all tired of the drum, and we're all tired of uh, of it. The sad thing is, narcissists don't recognize their behavior. They're the last ones to, to, to see it. Can they change if they want to? And it's hard work. But it can be done. Also, I just want to, before we continue, as a means of introduction, uh, just a couple of legal things too that are that you might want to consider. Uh, if you can go on internet or social media, and if you're just portraying facts or accounting, something, that's perfectly fine. Just as much as a journalist can. Uh, just as much as a blogger can, 
And if, if, if the blogger and then the reporter is working to the best of his or her knowledge, then that person is on solid ground. You could, and rather than pick on a woman, just as, as, a, case in, as a case in point, we'll use Bob. Okay. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm just pulling a name out, out of a hat and we're going to just use a fictitious name. But... Not that I'd want to, but theoretically, I could I could say, Bob's a jerk. I wouldn't. That's not part of my values. I, you know, I I wouldn't. But I could say that. I wouldn't be doing anybody any favors, you know. Of, of course, and those would, of course, would be, uh, would be would be fighting words. Yeah, I could, you know, I could say that. I not that I'd want to. What I can't say. Is I can't say Bob, you know, when, when the records are clear, I can't say Bob is a stalker, Bob is a bank robber, uh, Bob uh, works in uh, works on the wrong side of the tracks in a in a strip club. I don't mean janitorial supplies, you know, you know what I mean. And those facts are not true, especially when 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 Bob is can you know can demonstrate his integrity. His integrity. I at that point, I could be liable for for slander and libel and and defamation of character. The that is what's called being actionable. Bob could take legal action against me. So, so yes, you can mention you can mention a person, place, or or thing for the purpose of. Of critique uh, for the purpose of, of education. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm sure not going to do it for any entertainment value. So I just wanted to, you know, to had to get that out of the way. Uh, some people have found found out the hard way that you know, slander defamation character. Well, as a good Quaker friend of mine puts it. Eventually, you're going to run afoul of the immutable law of consequences, and such as the, such as the such as the case point. In this particular situation, I'm not trying to drag a butterfly into the into the mud, but and I and you know, for the record, it's very well documented that we've tried to go into the butterfly and her mom and her, and her family on, on, on several occasions. Three different churches have tried, and they have flat out refused. Um, I also want to kind of give, you know, give a, at this point. I want to go ahead and and keep and give a little 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 background. Um, there's nothing we can do about the abusers, but what I can do is I can show how the abuse uh, uh, played out. Now, for the record, I'm going to use the fictional characters of Judy, who's the butterfly, and Juliana, which is her mom. I'm just going to call them. We'll call them the uh, Heidelberg family. Uh, also, at this point, it's I'm going to talk about the alleged stalking incident at what we're going to call the Windsor Heights Memorial Church. Now, for the record, because Judy is no longer employed by the church, this is at least my understanding. We don't know whether whether Judy resigned or was terminated or forced to resign. Narcissists aren't going to tell you the whole story. We don't know. But because of, because that Judy is no longer employed with Winter Heights Memorial Church, um, there's no there, at this point I'm dropping everything against against the church. And actually, if anything, I can be really you know really forgiving on this one because I. I have a feeling the the pastor got got taken for for a narcissistic ride, and I'll, I'll explain you know what, explain later in the, in the video on, on that one. Uh, I'm going to mention you know, Christian beliefs and scriptures. Not and again, it's not to proselytize. It's not to preach a position. It's just as as points of reference. Yeah. You know, if, some, if I decide to go to Quaker meetings, somebody's going to explain how Quaker meeting works. It's quite different. 
If I decide to go to a midnight mass, a Catholic church, I'm not Catholic. Yeah, I'm actually was RCA candidate, and that's fine. But uh, you know, for anybody going, for anybody uh, going to midnight mass, there's always in the, there's always in the in the bulletins, you know, explanations of how the mass works and what you can do and what you cannot do. And they're they're certainly delighted to have you. So, and again, that's for the and that's for the purpose of uh, of it, of it, of education. Okay. Uh, let me also just kind of give give a thought. This is from Elizabeth Shaw. Um, she has a she has a YouTube channel uh, channel on narcissism. Uh, she's got quotes on on face on Facebook in there. They're really sharp. They're really sharp. Quick sentences or memes, as we like to call them. But once she has, no matter how you how much you beg a narcissist to stop, they'll push you past your limits until you snap. And then when they do, they stand back and act shocked and play the victim and claim you're crazy. And if you've and if you've been if you've realized you've been there, well, now you know how now you know how the how narcissists uh, play play the game. Okay, so the Christian references just for you know, for for education, okay. So for the purpose of education, there is an act. There is what's called slander. Slander is deliberately telling tales or lies or trying to discredit a person for the purpose of, of tearing them down. In an evangelical church, this is a most serious offense, right up there with having an affair. In an evangelical church. This is considered grounds for excommunication. If other things that are considered an absolute no-no, if you if you will, in the type of settings that the Heidelbergs and I were, slander, telling deliberate lies, gossip, creating disruption in a in a church, and undermining a Christian min, uh, ministry, which there which there, which there clearly was. That that's a that's a serious offense. I mean, the fact that Windsor Heights didn't uh, didn't address the situation, you know, that that that's serious in in in, the, in of itself. And I think I may have some pers uh, perspective as possibly uh, why they why they haven't. And again, to reiterate, I have no more fit claims with with Windsor Heights Memorial Church. Uh, I certainly have no claims with the. Uh, with with the, with the pastor and allow members to go there personally, and I, again, I think they were narcissistic. They were in a narcissistic manner. They were had. I, and I mentioned this because there are certain those. If you're in an evangelical setting, there are certain moral codes that you're going you're going to adhere to. Uh, just a, just an, just an example. If, obviously, if you're going to work in a Catholic ministry, you're going to adhere to the to the teachings of the Catholic Church. That's you know you know up front. Uh, I saw an advertisement for a child care director in a Nazarene church. It says very clearly you're going to adhere to the to the doctrine of the handbook uh, the, of the Church of Nazarene. That's part of the condition of employment. On a, as a secular example, I've been in radio. Have been have been for, have been for years, and there's something that's a serious no-no. Using profanity is is a serious no-no. If you're just using the seven words you can never use in the radio, George Carlin, that's going to get you fired. And at least on, a, on an over-the-air station, when when you get in the when you get the cable, when you get into cable and online, the rules are kind of different. But as far as the traditional over-the-air station that one's listening to in their car, or a TV station, which one's going to be what, which is going to be a standard one, either watching with rabbits or or on your or your local local cable company, if it's a over-the-air feed, again to use to use profanity is 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 grounds for termination. That's the nature of the biz. In baseball, just as, as a quick case in point. Gambling is going to get you fired, Pete Rose. Steroid use is going to get one kicked out of baseball, and 
And you know, it's 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 kind of tragic. I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan, but to see the and it was like well over ten years ago now that see the to see Mark McGuire, who was a star player, crash and burn because of a steroid use. So but those so again, the reality is, is there are there are in the evangelical setting certain things that are just you don't do them or else one's going to get fired just as much as radio one doesn't use certain words on the air and then it's, and then in baseball just as case point there, there are certain things um, just as a point of illustration I'm going to go ahead and just you know, quote you know, just two scriptures and again this is for education and, 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 and illumination uh, I'm reading uh, Proverbs uh, 6, 12, and 19. A worthless man, a wicked man, is the one who works, who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually divides evil, and who spreads strife. Therefore his calamity will come suddenly, instantly. He is broken, and there will be no healing. There are six things that the Lord hates, yes, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. That's very serious. And one's a Christian employment, that's very serious. Another thing too that you know that that's also that's also important. And this is coming from the from the uh, the New Testament, and it it says there Ephesians five six and fourteen. And again, this is just for for education for for explanation. But it says, let no one deceive you with empty words, because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you have formerly darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children in the light, for the fruit of the light uh, consists of all goodness and righteousness and truth. You are know, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and I put these words in, in bold myself. And this is this is this is something that you know that evangelicals believe in. It says, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them, for it's disgraceful to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But when all things come visible, they'll be exposed by the light, and everything that becomes visible is, is light. Is it the same thing as karma? Eh, maybe. But that's, an, you know, that's another, another story. I think it's kind of like what my Quaker friend said. Eventually, you're going to run afoul of the, the immutable law of consequences. There is a process of recon reconciliation for unrepentant evangelical believers. And, and then there's also a process of hearing to bring uh, both parties to settle the dispute. What should happen in a healthy church is witnesses to both sides are brought together to reconcile. If the offending party refuses, a hearing or a public meeting is convened to remove the member, the members out of out of the church, that's standard up. That's standard operating procedure. The rules are different. There may be a public meeting, and then a congregation votes on it. There may be a meeting with, which should be, uh, the pastors, the officers of the church, and then some church, and then some church members that are supposed to be randomly selected to act as witnesses, and then they, and then they would they would have, a a uh, group conscience, shall we say, to vote those members. The fact of the matter is, is that the Heidelberg have refused to meet on, I believe it's three separate occasions. Uh, the first case, we'll discuss that in a little more detail. The second case I've referenced, City Church tried to reach out to them, and they, they refused, and a, another Turner Syndrome butterfly attacked the senior pastor of City Church, and as a result, a uh, an active ministry to uh, turn syndrome uh, butterflies uh, was was shut down. Also, 
it should be it should be noted that they had, that the Heidelbergs tried to go back to the church, which we are at the same time members. That and then I've I ran into Robert Heidelberg, uh, uh, Mr. Heidelberg, if you will, at we'll just say at Central Church, and and it's and it's the Windsor Windsor uh, Windsor Heights Central Church, their pastor, and the district superintendent have have extensive documentation on slander. Death threats, and just and then it's and it's quite possible that and we don't know, but I know that if I were a pastor and this information that the my that my employees are engaging this behavior, they're causing disruption in the church, they're attacking another Christian brother, and then they're using death threats and breaking the law. As a pastor, I would have to seriously wonder, and as a church board, I would have to seriously wonder if we could still have these people as members of the church. Is that what happened? I don't know, because narcissists aren't like to hide, the, like to hide the truth. They they don't. They the last thing they want to do is is come clean. I'm going to go ahead and and read something that I actually found on on. Uh, on Facebook, and then I went back and, and checked it in, you uh, know, in Google, and I'm trying to. Oh, here it is. Um, the uh, Facebook uh, page is called Trauma and Dissociation. The uh, the uh, blog uh, site is Trauma Dissociation. Dot WordPress. Dot com. I want you know, anytime I quote something, I want to make sure that that I. That I give that I give appropriate uh, appropriate credit credit, but here's what's in, but here's what's in the blog, and this one just really kind of kind of made, made me wonder. Perhaps of all types of narcissistic abusers, the victimized abuser is the most difficult to get past. Let me read, let me let me read that again because I had to let that soak in. Perhaps of all types of narcissistic abusers, the victimized abuser is the most difficult to get past. That's the one who's, who's going around and saying, Mark's stalking me. Mark's this. Mark's that. And they can play a really sad story in self-pity and oh, woe is me and get everybody else caught up in, in, in into into the line. Some narcissists going back again go back to the going back to the quote now. Some narcissists learn that they could get attention and control others by being victims. And this is and I at first I didn't want to didn't want to believe it because you know, it's like no Judy's too sweet. She would do she would do something like she's loving and caring and compassionate and somebody else pointed out to. Her. But there is a dark side to the, the narcissist, and some people in the turn syndrome community. You, you need to, she's going to play. Judy's going to play the victim role, and she play. She plays a really good game of it. Now I've smartened up to it, and I have to say to the other butter to the other butterflies that brought that to my attention, I have to say, yep. Some narcissists learn that they could get attention and control by being victims. Their lives become one sad story after another, and that they'll find listeners and believers and and helpers to manipulate. And the Judy and Juliana did did a pretty good job of uh, uh, of, of bullying and then enlisting uh, hundreds of women with straight out lies. And try to play the you know the the the, the vic, you know the victim role, and I think some some of the women didn't even realize what the, what they were what they were getting involved in. I don't think they realized they they had been had some you know some of their, you know they they blown it in the documentation there. Some I could I can really be forgiving because I don't think they realized what they what they got themselves caught into. Especially ones I was pretty good friends with until, until the narcissist loved until the, until the narcissist and all their friends 
which are called flying monkeys, uh, did did a, did a game did a game of attacking. So their lives can be one side story or another. They find listers believers to help manipulate. This can be a type of covert narcissism, narcissism that can be very difficult to understand and and to, and to handle. Victimized narcissists are masters at projection, among other behaviors. They can say hurtful things to you, but if you dare say something back, you're labeled as abusive. They can call you any name, but if you challenge them, you're being mean. They can lie about themselves, about you, and sound so honest. And there's always been someone who will who, who will believe them. So, uh, again, uh, giving proper quotes, uh, Facebook page, uh, Trauma and Dissociation is the website. The blog uh, site is traumadissociation.wordpress.com. And the quote, the quote directly comes from Grace from My Heart. dot wordpress. dot com forward slash twenty fifteen forward slash zero three forward slash thirteen forward slash victimized dash narcissist. So I just want to make sure that I gave credit. And so now we want to go back and, and look at. What really happened? So, the, so, so the the narcissist really tried to pull a, you know, you know, pull, you know, pull a fast one, and tried to stir up that I was trying to that I was stalking her, and I was stalking the church, and 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 then she used lots of, of, of people to perpetuate the 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 myth. Now people got you know got caught. One thing that narcissists hate is the truth. They hate to be exposed. And, and they'll, they'll keep running and denying, except doing everything, except, you know, igno acknowledging what's, you know, what's going on. Can they change? It's not easy. You know, they're going to have to admit that, that they have a problem. Most say they won't. I don't know. God has a way of changing people. I used to play some of those games, but let's go. Let's go back and look at what happened. Now, as I as I said earlier, in an evangelical church, there are certain rules that one that one, and there are certain codes of conduct that are to be followed, especially if somebody is in Christian ministry and in employment. And you know we know we know you know we know that we know the story that I contacted the pastor and the district superintendent, and I was rather surprised that the pastor didn't want to have anything to do with the 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 issue. And I and I, I wasn't there obviously, but I have a feeling the pastor was had. I think he had the wool pulled pulled over his eye because. I talked to people who know Pastor Larry Richards. And we're going to use a fictional name again. He said, "No, I know Pastor Larry, and a lot of us knew him in in the AA in AA and and Narcotics Anonymous. And he has a heart for recovering alcoholics and recovering drug drug addicts, which is a little surprising because if he if he does, he would know about resentment, about you know, self pity, and then how, why he didn't." Why did pick up and and I think that I think Judy, but he's coming after me. I'm so scared. And then and then uh, and I think Juliana threw her threw threw her away. Like, Wait, she should have anything to do with him because he's a stalker. He's a pedophile. And but behind the scenes. And, you know, Juliana said, I don't want your part in the Turner Center community. I'm going to make things messy for you. It's a true mark of a narcissist. The other mark, too, of them is, is they don't want to be accountable, and they'll have everybody else do their dirty work. I mean, I confronted Juliana. She was in total denial. Didn't happen. And 
Judy kept playing the, you know, the the victim role, and she kept playing the story. Well, here's how you here's how you handle a situation like this. You tell the truth. So we all know the stalking is. We know we now we we've we've established that the stalking incident was a fabrication. What had happened, you know, okay, there was a mis... You know, we all know the truth. If you don't want to listen to it, that's on you. But we all know we all know the well-documented truth that I and Judy just happened to be going to the same same city. Uh, she to visit relatives and to go to the Turner Syndrome charity walk and I to watch one of my favorite baseball teams and I decided to surprise her. Butterflies don't like surprises. The, I mean, it's well-documented that within 24 hours of the incident, she asked for my forgiveness. It's well documented that my wife was immediately involved in this. It's well documented that my that the church was in on it, and they were and they they were fine with my handling. It's well documented that Juliana asked me to come back to Central Church. And then it kind of explained about you know Judy Judy's situation, and then I say I sent letters which have been you know, publicly printed, but nobody wants to really look at them, including the Turner Syndrome Society, which I think is kind of interesting. Which is another, which is another kind of another video. But you know it's it's the fact is it's, it's well it's well documented. So we know that story is not going is not going to hold doesn't hold up. The other, the other thing, the other thing too, is that I mean, for some reason, the the pastor said that, oh, the the the, the Richards are not mem not members of the church. I don't know. Was he trying to protect the Heidelbergs based on the information? Did he fall for the lie? Did he fall for the victim story? Did he fall for, you know, uh, you know, Juliana being real bold and threatening? Or maybe sounding real sweet and, and, and innocent? It's within the realm of possibility. We don't know. But that's, you know, that's a possibility for, for whatever reason. He said, they're not members of the church. Okay. So I said, okay, great. All right, they're not members, all right, misunderstanding. But I went to visit and ran ran into them. And instead of it just being... Now, in a healthy relationship, in a transparent relationship, we'd say, okay, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't know you were members there. Certainly if I knew you were members there, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. And I would apologize, and there, there would be forgiveness. Not in the case of the Heidelbergs. They played this narcissistic game to the hill, and got more bullying, and more and more flying monkeys, and 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 accomplices, you know, to, 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 do, to do the dirty work. And and Judy was playing was playing the you know, the. You know the victim role. And one thing about the victims too, and heaven knows I've done it too, is that with the victims, there's a lot of there's a lot of shame and a lot of a lot of self-loathing and a lot of energy and a lot of just utter insanity to the to, to this you know to, to this game. But that's how that's how you expose. And actually, I did actually do a do a you know, did a video. You know, de debunking all the, the stories, you know, point by point by point. If they were transparent and if they were truly walking the Lord and being, you know, repentant, they would they would have come. They would have called the you know called Pastor Larry, called us in for a meeting of reconciliation. Instead, they made up a story that they filed up a police report of stalking. Well. Wait, now you have to, now what you do with narcissists is you educate. They don't like the truth being told. 
But we're going to tell you, but we're going to tell the truth anyway. And they may scream and threaten, you know. But, you know what? Uh, now I know the game. I don't have to play it. Now that I know the game, and now that other butterflies know the game, you don't have to play it. You can change the channel. You can say, hey, this isn't a healthy, this isn't a healthy situation for me. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to play anymore. But they tried, they tried to do a, you know, they said they contact, they contacted the police. They were talking to them. Okay. I speak and spoke. I have done my research, and I've also seek legal counsel. Stalking is repeated menacing. A one-time situation does not constitute repeated contacting, especially if you're told don't contact. That's stalking. And we've had some narcissistic abusers who would not take no for an answer, and and uh, you know finally, is uh, you know I had you know excuse me, a couple things dropped off, and I had to say you know what, okay. And I think the prospect of having the especially in that one state which has some very strict talk law, to have the police come to your door and go, <laughs> that I think. Uh, might get people to kind of, you know, to kind of really, to really think about it. Narcissists will blame everybody, but they will not take responsibility for themselves. Getting back to the stalking. Stalking is repeated menacing. Repeated. Fact. And what they don't want, they, what they don't want to tell you is that and this was this was well documented that no place that well they don't want to hear they don't want to hear they don't want to hear the truth also in the state of ohio if they had actually filed a police report i would have gotten a phone call from the police department making an inquiry or i would have gotten a a, a letter from from the uh, from the city of Columbus or from Franklin County. I also went back and asked for a police report using the Heidelberg's name. Nothing. But they but they but those play this they will play this victim game and it, it's so hard to you know to you know to track the track down. So, we know today, though, that we know that Judy is no longer employed with, with Windsor Heights. We don't, you know, we, we don't know why. But I wanted to go ahead and you know, let's show you how, you know, how this game is, is played. And I would encourage people in the Turner Center community who are wondering... What this drama is all about? Do your homework. Check. You know, don't take my word for it. I just encourage you to go ahead and and, uh, and and check check for yourself. If you've been a victim of bullying, or you feel like you've been had, or somebody's taking you to a ride, there's no shame in in, in coming clean and actually. You know, there's an old saying. There's an old saying: "Is you're only sick as your secrets." So sometimes coming clean and telling those secrets and exposing the elephant in, in the room is oftentimes, yeah, you know, just the, you know, just the uh, best route to go. So, so today, we are just, you know, just kind of summarizing. We looked at what's, we looked at what's called the victimizing narcissist. And I think we saw a really good example of it in the in in the, in the Turner syndrome Turner syndrome community, and a lot of people got caught up. How do you solve the problem? Well, if they don't want to be helped or they don't recognize this problem, just, all you can do is have nothing more to do with them. I would hope that maybe some caring butterflies might be able to. 
you know, to talk to them, say, you know, maybe have that heart to heart, but I don't think they're going to listen. Maybe somebody who's recovered from, you know, somebody can go to him, you know, go to Judy, say, you know, Judy, I used to bully like this. I used to kind of, used to do these games and, you know, I really hurt myself and others. Let me tell you about what, you know, what was, what was like and what happened and what, you know, what I do today. One narcissist helping another, that's within the realm of, realm of possibility. So, but that's, there's kind of a, you know, textbook example. The last thought I would, would have, though, you know, it's, 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 you know, all, all of us, butterflies, butterflies and friends, all to be deserved, to be treated with, with dignity and respect. And the fact, though, that the Turner Syndrome Society has enabled the, the Heidelbergs to use the organization of a bully pulpit. And it's not just a Mark situation. Other people have gotten attacked. And they have consistently, and I've got documentation, turned a blind eye. And they've said, I've, no, no, there's, no, 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 we don't have to be bullying. I mean, I have one situation where somebody says, not in purview, and then went on to my own in true narcissistic fashion, now that we know the game, talked about all my psychoses, but did not once acknowledge there's a problem. The one person, one higher up at a national conference says, we're not going to deal with this problem. But at the same time, I've also heard a lot of anxious butterflies and a lot of angry butterflies said, what do you mean you're not going to deal with this problem? We'll see about that. You know, some, you know, some of the comments. What do you do in a situation like this? I don't know. My experience is what's, you know, what's going to happen next? I don't know. My past experience is that most people kind of see the light. They kind of go, I don't want to be part of this anymore. No, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm done. Other people are going to kind of get, you know, kind of get, you know, tired, you know, going to get tired of it. Other people are kind of, you know, kind of hip to it and have tried to, you know, try to try to ignore it, but I think on the other hand, when when you know Turner Syndrome Society has heard of the of their members engage, and you say, well, what is not a purview? But they're still not acknowledging that members have been they have been breaking the law, creating psychological and emotional harm. And psychological, and it's, an, it's, a, it's an organization in which we advocate for Turner syndrome, but we also implied in the limited Turner syndrome is also how to deal with bullying, and they're not, then they're not acknowledging it. I don't know. I'll just I know if I if I had a daughter, a Turner syndrome a daughter, and I was hearing this. I would wonder, you know, can I really support this organization anymore? Will others vote with their feet? I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't tell. But anyway, I hope this helps uh, educate people. You know, I hope people kind of, will kind of think about it and, and and learn, you know, learn learn about it. And hope that we can be the uh, the older and the wiser and. And I hope this might be helpful. So, as always, take what you like, leave the rest. Talk to you later.